In this video, I'm going to go over a web browser known as the SeaMonkey web browser. And if you found this video on YouTube, I will provide the link below the video that shows you how to install it and to customize it on your system. Let's first take a look at what SeaMonkey is. SeaMonkey is a free open source internet suite that's made up of a web browser, an email and news client program, and an IRC chat client. It's based on the source code of Netscape Communicator, so it's a descendant of Netscape and the Mozilla families. SeaMonkey is considered an all-in-one application suite. You can find more about the entire suite from the SeaMonkey web uh, page project web page, which you can click this link to learn more about the other parts of the package. I'm going to only focus on the SeaMonkey web browser since I do have a section on web browsers and I put the SeaMonkey within it. The SeaMonkey web browser uses the Gecko browser engine developed by Mozilla. Now and if you install any of the Mozilla forks, you know, such as Pelmoon or any of the other forks of the Firefox, they do use the third-party extension or their old legacy extensions. And I do have links to the legacy extensions down below. But first, let me show you how to install it. For a Windows system, you can click the installation files here, Macs, or even Linux installations from here. Now, if you already have SeaMonkey installed on your system, they do recommend backing up your profile so that when you install it, you won't lose things like your bookmarks or your passwords, just on a precaution. More than likely, you won't lose them, but this is just to be on the safe side. Now, I do have three methods. This is method one, here's method two, and I have method three at the bottom of the site. To install it by using the terminal, you copy the whole echo to end of null. So you don't just copy this first line, you copy the entire line. You open your terminal, you paste this into the terminal, press the enter or return key, put your password in. Once that you put your password in, you press the enter or return key, and you don't see anything happen. You now go and enter the key, so that way that it won't ignore this repository when you go to update and upgrade. So it makes it a sign. So you, you press the enter or return key, and it's going to install that key to your system. Now we want to update our repository so that we can install it from this third-party repository. So to sudo apt-get update, while it's updating the repository, I'm going to put on the clipboard sudo apt get install cmonkey mozilla build with the dashes between them right click copy open the terminal and when it finishes updating the repositories i will paste this into my terminal i then press the enter or return key i don't have to put the password since it's just recently been put in there it downloaded now it's unpacking cmonkey and then it will install cmonkey while it's installing it method two is where you can go to source forge and Source, source Forge and download the DEB package to install on your system, whether it's a 32-bit system or 64-bit system. Go to the actual DEB file, double-click it, let your package install and install it. I have GDEB and I show you how to install GDEB on your system. When it loads, after it installs for the first time, you'll look in the menu and it will show Mozilla Build of SeaMonkey. Um, I do have the instructions for shorten it down to SeaMonkey. It should be installed. I'm going to exit the terminal. I will go through my menu and it should show SeaMonkey since I previously installed it and changed it but for the first time it should show Mozilla build of SeaMonkey so let me minimize this browser go up here go to applications internet and there's SeaMonkey for the first time it will show Mozilla SeaMonkey version of SeaMonkey so I click onto it since I have previously installed it on here it's not going to display something that it will for the first time that you do. The first time you, that you install it, it will ask you, do you want to make it your default browser, your default email client, and always check when you're opening up SeaMonkey. I don't want to make it my default browser. Eventually, if I get used to it, I might, but for right now, I'm going to uncheck the browser. I use Thunderbird as my default email client, so I uncheck this, and I uncheck that nagging to always ask it that question every time I load. So this is what it looks like. I uncheck all of those and then I hit the OK button. You can click on links on the side so that if you want to download it to a thumb drive, you can hit download now. It finds your version of your operating system if you choose a different operating system by dropping down and choosing a different language. You can download this and put like on a thumb drive to install it on another system that may not have access to the internet at that particular time. But you have to have access to the internet since you're installing a browser. But at that particular time, you might put it on thumb drive to carry over to a different system. Now, here's what it looks like by default, minus the, the little box. And it may have a yellow URL bar. 
And that's because I previously installed that, uninstalled the extension, but it kept some of the settings on my system. I didn't completely remove all my settings and clear the cache. But it will look like this. It has large icons by default. So if you have problems with your eyesight, you might like the large icons and the text underneath it. If you don't like the large icons and the text with the icons, you can right click on the icon. You can customize it. You can remove the menu bar if you don't like it. I do like the menu bar so you can right click and put it back. Now it does by default have the bookmarks bar which looks like this. So you're going to see bookmarks. Since I like the bookmarks menu here, it's redundant to have them twice so I uncheck the bookmarks bar. Again, if you don't like the large icons, you can right click on them, highlight settings for this toolbar, and you can choose just the icons without the icon and text. If you like the smaller icons, you can choose use small icons. Now, I don't really even like these icons, the search, the print, and the SeaMonkey homepage. So you can even customize those. You can right click and choose customize. Now I don't have any other installation. You know, I could choose the separators and the defaults here, but I could just simply drag these and put them here, just as you would with a Firefox web browser. Now I can add on my personal add-ons and then I can drag them up here. So I'm done. If for example, you want to restore it, you can hit restore the defaults. You can go and make changes to them and then hit the done button. Now let me go and copy SeaMonkey from my Vivaldi browser and put it within my SeaMonkey browser itself. So when I click links, it will open it within the SeaMonkey rather than Viv the Vivaldi. Now I've already went and installed it. I couldn't have SeaMonkey open since I installed it so that I've finished this installation way. I've already showed you if you download the Deb package and how you can change the name from Mozilla Build to SeaMonkey just to say SeaMonkey for short. I've already showed you how you can uncheck those and download those. I already showed you how you can change the size of your icons. Now if you'd like add-ons, you can click the add-on link here. You could bookmark this so that you got your third-party extensions. And not only these are third-party extensions, these are legacy extensions. So you can go through here and look for popular extensions or search for extensions here. You can also scroll down and find them from this link. Here you got extensions for Pell Moon, Firefox, and Sea Monkey. You can go through here and look and download them as well. Now you notice here it shows you for Sea Monkey, Firefox, and Pell Moon. Some of them misses uh, the Sea Monkey, but that don't mean it won't work. If you click here, it just takes you to their GitHub website where you can download things from the GitHub website from this link. Another way you can do that is by going down here. This is the same person the just off but you can click his github website like for example if i wanted the uh, archive extension so i don't have to bookmark or open up these bookmarks i can click this to find my extensions i can click this 8 xpi extension and by default it may not show the install software the first time you might have to download this to your downloads folder go file choose open find the folder and hit open and let it install but here I'm going to click the install button. It's downloading the extension. And when it downloads the ex after it finishes, click on the classic add-on archive, click install, open the add-ons manager. And as you can see, it's here. So I can drag this and put this on this bar. I can't from here. I can't drag and put this up here. But remember, if I right click up here and I choose customize, then this classic add-on, which I have here, I can now drag this to my bar up here and let go. And now when I click this icon, it's going to load the database. And so now it says, please reload the page. So I hit the reload button. Then I have my extensions that I have here. And if I close this tab, now if I want to install an extension, I can click here. And I have a lot of popular extensions that I can choose from just that little add-on which I have here. So let me close that particular tab. And now these were the default tabs already installed by the browser which is Chatzilla, the DOM Inspector, and Lightning, the Calendar. If you want to disable the ones that were pre-installed, disable, disable, disable. This was a legacy add-on that I added so I can disable it or I could click remove to remove it. Now before I close this tab, I can get add-ons by clicking here to find additional add-ons. These are the extensions that are added in the browser. These are the appearance where you can download additional themes. So if I go to view, apply a theme, I can say get more themes here or get more backgrounds for my opening homepage. Or I can say use the default theme or use the modern uh, SeaMonkey modern look. I prefer to use the default because it 
it has the dark that matches my dark theme. But if you'd like to go and look for additional themes, you can as well. And you can install additional plugins. So I'm going to close this particular tab. Since we just installed that, I'm going to close that. And since I already now have this link here as an add-on, I'm going to close this tab. Now I can come and look for things such as add blockers. So I put add, hit search, and I can download some things that have add extensions related here or I can close this tab and I can scroll down this is where I got the tab over here and I could use let me go back to it again one more time put add hit search and there's adblock plus there's the video download help there's adblock for Firefox one click so you got a lot of things that you can choose within that extension but let's say that I want to install the uBlock origin. I got the link to that, and I also have it from the GitHub website. So this is one of the legacy web uh, URL or the extensions that I'll be adding. If I click this, install the software, or let it download to my computer and go file up, uh, open, and say install, open the manager. As you can see, there's the uBlock origin, and there's the version of it. You can go into preferences, more, you can remove or disable it, but there's the uBlock. If you like uBlock to be next to your URL and this button over here, you can change the order. You can go to customize, you can pull this one back down, and you can put it back up there at the end of uBlock to change their order. So that way you have your uBlock origin next to your URL bar. You can hit done. So this is the way that you can remove extensions that you add. So let me close. Now I'm not going to add a lot more. You can go through and choose what extensions that you like. This just shows you the ad blocker. Now eventually when it updates its list, then you can go to places like YouTube and it will not show any ads on YouTube. It will block those. But just as you always normally do, you can come in here and turn that feature off. You can go through and adjust it just as you normally would with any other browser. So now there's one other thing or one other extension that I want to focus on. When you first install it, it may have a yellow URL bar and you might not like that. There is an extension called CFOX that you can install in CMonkey. And I do have a link somewhere on here. If I keep scrolling down, here it is, CFOX. If you click the CFOX link, now sometimes you might find an add-on that won't let you add it to CMonkey or download it. It makes it think that it's not compatible with your CMonkey. What's happened is, is this CMonkey version is newer than what they said that it's compatible with so if you're not sure you can say download anyway it's gonna say to open with or save I'm gonna hit save now I've already downloaded it before so you can see where it's got here it's here so instead of hitting save I'll just hit cancel the way that you install it manually is you go file to open the file you go to your downloads folder and then you go to CFOX you hit the open button say to install it say to restart your browser Say so restart your browser now, and when it opens up your browser, it's going to then remove the yellow. And by the first time that it ever opens, and I've already had it previously installed on here and had its settings, it's going to come up with a little dialog box that you see. Let me find it. I don't even know if I screen captured it, but it's going to come up with a dialog box to allow you to uncheck the yellow bar and I don't even think I even screen captured that but the first time that you install CFOX it will have a little dialog box and at the bottom it will have you to check to remove the yellow URL bars and that's the main focus on it and it will make it where you have dark backgrounds by uh, having a checkbox if you don't like the dark backgrounds you can uncheck that as well but now you can see that you now have the yellow URL bars that by default that it would have in those that looks like that I've showed you how to install the uBlock Origin, how you can get additional add-ons, classic legacy add-ons, how you can customize the look. And if you're wanting to manually update it, if you didn't install the PPA, you could go to Help, check for updates. It will scan across. If there's any updates available, you can tell it to download and install the updates. Again, you can go to Edit, Your Preferences. You can see that CMonkey is going to open by the, the default start page. You can choose your own start page. Now, I'm not a big fan of the Bing search engine by the search engine, but I do like Bing.com just for its daily image of the day. So when you're opening up the browser for the first time. So when I close this now, I will copy CMonkey here so I can come back to it. When I close it, open back CMonkey. Instead of opening up to the CMonkey's start page, it's now going to open up the Bing website 
as the home page or the start page. Now I can right click, paste, and go back to it. And you can see that you can customize from the information that I have on my website. But if you'd like to go to edit preferences, by default, it's going to highlight the browser first. Remember, this is a complete package internet suite. You can go up here to control the appearance, such as your fonts, your colors, the media, check for spelling automatically. You can go through and change your history, your languages, and many other things that's similar within your Firefox browser. You can change your privacy data, whether or not you want to delete cookies, use the password manager built within the browser, or you can go and change some of the advanced features. And I'm not going to focus on those because different people pre change the preferences according to their likes or dislikes and by unchecking things. But that's how you get to the preferences by using edit preferences. You change the view of the theme by going view, get more things, or clicking onto a theme. Now, if you choose a bunch of themes to install, if you click on them, sometimes the little buttons around them might not uh, change until you close the browser and reopen it. You've got a lot of things within your tool. You've got your classic, uh, you got add-ons archive, just like clicking here. You can add multiple profiles and switch profiles here. You've got your bookmarks, your history, your view. You can zoom in and zoom out. And you got your normal file commands that you'd normally find with any browser. So hopefully this has given you a little bit of understanding of how to use CMonkey. If you decide that you don't like CMonkey, then you can open up your terminal, put sudo app get remove CMonkey dash the Mozilla build, press the enter, put your password, press enter again, and it will remove it from your system. Now, the third method, I told you I had three methods for installing. If you click onto the project's web page, it will show you like download CMonkey for your Linux. You can choose other systems. As you can see here, there's a lot of languages, different platforms for the Windows 64 bit, the Windows 32 bit, the Mac 64 bit, Linux 64 bit, Linux 32 bit. So you can download the installation file for your type of operating system and that's method three. So hopefully this gives you an idea of what CMonkey is or at least the CMonkey web browser and how to use it. It's very similar to the Mozilla Firefox. It just uses the legacy add-on extensions. It's very quick. You notice when I closed it and when I opened it back up, it's it's not very heavy even though it's a complete internet package it loads very fast on um, this is an old laptop and it's still loaded very quick so it doesn't use up a lot of resources so if you're tired of those resource hungry chrome and chromium type browsers you might want to give cmonkey a try and hopefully this video has been helpful to you and have a great day